Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel, Richard here. Um, today I am going to talk real quick about the local storage access that Adobe introduced, I think in October 2023. It means that you can now access all of your files on all of your attached hard drives to your desktop computer without using a megabyte of data in the cloud. Um, so for those that want to use Lightroom but doesn't want to pay for storage, You've got that, let's take a look at it. Okay, yeah, everyone, welcome back to the channel. Richard here, it's good to see everybody. Um, so, like I just mentioned that Adobe in, um, actually, first up, if you're new here, welcome. Uh, the channel is all about me rambling on about photography and Lightroom and things like that. I do a lot of editing, um, playing around with Lightroom, like learning new things. When I learn something, I'll share it. Other people may have done the similar videos, but they're not me. So um, basically, today what we're doing is looking at the local tab in um, Adobe Lightroom. Uh, they introduced it in, like I said, in October 2023, I think, in an, an update, which means that if you use the cloud-based version of Lightroom, you can now edit your photos directly from your hard drives. So before you had to add them into the cloud and use up your cloud storage, you don't have to do that anymore. You can use Lightroom direct on your hard drives. Obviously, if you want to share those amongst your devices, you do have to add them to the cloud infrastructure, um, but you don't have to, and that's key. So I'm gonna take a quick look at that um, and just a couple of things I've found where it's a little bit different to Lightroom Classic, so it may not be ideal, but for some people it may be perfect. I'm not here to pass judgment, I'm not here to recommend it, I'm just here to show you what I've found and hopefully give you a bit more information if you want to make an informed decision on which way you'll go. Perhaps you're just starting with Lightroom or perhaps you've been using Classic for years and years and years like I have. Um, and with the mobile and the advent of iPads and phones and editing on the go and things like that, do you want to get all your photos in the cloud, or you're happy just to have them on the hard drive at home, or maybe you just want to put a few on the cloud and use up less storage, perhaps just the ones you've edited. So we're going to take a look at that now. We're going to jump into Lightroom and look at Classic and Lightroom cloud-based version, um, and I'll show you what I found. Let's go. Right, so here we are in Lightroom, the cloud-based version. We have um, gone straight into the cloud tab. You can see up here in the top left-hand corner there is now the cloud and the local tab. I'm not going to talk about this too much, sorry. So this down here, I don't know much about this. It's obviously learn is where you can tutorials and learn how to do things. You've got community where there's all sorts of things like your own profile, which I have nothing on because I don't use this version that often. Featured people, people that you're following and remixes, which again, I'm not really that familiar with. So I'm not going to talk much about the community. All photos, these are every single photo that you have synced to your cloud. Um, and these folders here are the collections that are synced via Lightroom Classic so that I can get them into Adobe Portfolio, which I'm not going to talk about today. So folders from 2023, folders from 2022, and some that I consider to be a portfolio, i.e. my favourite best photos I've done. So um, that's the Cloud tab. I'm not going to talk too much about that, but this is the tab that I'm going to go to, and this is the Local tab. So... What this shows you is all of your hard drives that you can access, whether it be external ones. These are my external hard drives one to three, external hard drive four, external hard drive five, and five backup, because that's what I'm using now for work. And home 001 is my where I put all my personal photos. Home 001 backup is self-explanatory. And here is the home sort of folder on my Mac, which is the same if I wanted to get into um, all of my documents and stuff that's saved directly on my Mac hard drive. So if you want to import photos into here, I think in a previous video I did about is Lightroom Classic coming to an end at some point. Um, I did say there's no way of importing photos, but I was wrong, I'm happy to admit that. I'm gonna pop an SD card now. I have a SD card here that I'm just gonna pop into a hard drive. And we can see at the top, oh, we can see at the top here that EOS Digital has come up. We can click on there and we can import whatever photos are on there, which 
I am not going to do because I don't want to import them at the moment. Um, I'm not even sure what's in there to be honest. <laughs> ah, just some silly videos I've been doing in the office. So we will cancel that up there. I'll go into that in a later date of how you get photos in. But basically speaking, that's where you'd go if you wanted to import straight from a hard drive. Um, so I'm going to do something here now where I'm going to try and show you I'm going to tail this to the left and on the right I'm going to have my finder window. So we can see down the left here hard drive one, two, three, four, five, home, etc. And down the left hand side here, EHD one, two, three, four, five, and home. If we click on home, we can see up here we've got branding, master video, photos, and video. And here we've got branding, master photos, video, blah blah blah. If I go into photos. We have three folders, Lightroom, private, and uh, that's just a backup of Suzanne's phone. Uh, and that is in photos. We've got Lightroom, private, a backup. So you can see all it is is basically just a mirror image or it's it's just looking at your finder windows. So all of my photos are stored in on our external hard drive in Lightroom, library, and then I have all the years here. So let's replicate that on this side. We have Lightroom, library, and all the photos that we have, all the folders that we have here. If I click on 2023, these are all the things that I've done this year, days out, holidays, trips away, things like that. And likewise, if I click down here, we have the same thing. So I can now access all of these photos in here. So I'm gonna click on expand motorhome higher here, and I'm gonna show you motorhome higher here, around the van and heading out, around the van and heading out. Now, there is one thing that is a little bit misleading um, in Lightroom Classic let me just really quickly flick back to Lightroom Classic if I can there cancel that because that's trying to import basically you can see these little folders down the where are we here you see these for all these folders here so again these are the, um, the the folders I've imported to my Lightroom Classic catalog and we can see that there it has all these arrows down here to indicate whether or not there is subfolders. You can see that the ones that have got subfolders are solid gray. The ones that haven't are like a dotted gray. You only know that the subfolders are in the one with the solid gray arrow. In Lightroom, they all have arrows. So you don't really know if there is a subfolder below it until you click on it. Max school photos, there's nothing there. Tenerife, there's nothing there. Uh, Norwegian fjords, there's nothing underneath that one. There is under motorhome hire, but you don't know that until you click on it. And secondly, if we go to motorhome hire here and I click on the parent folder, the folder does not contain any editable files. Whereas in Lightroom, if I click on here, I will get, oh, let's turn the flag off. I will get all 42 files come up and if I want to see them individually I can go to the 19 there and the 23 there um, or see all 42. Now this doesn't happen in Lightroom cloud-based and it doesn't happen in Finder either. You know you have to go into a separate folder so that just demonstrates it's an exact copy or an exact view of what's on your hard drive. So I'm going to close this folder down now because I think I've demonstrated enough that we've got we are looking at a mirror image of your hard drive. So I'm going to close down the finder window and go back to just Lightroom. Um, one good thing that I do like about the local folder is that you don't always have to navigate through all of those, all that sort of hierarchy of, of folders to get to the one you want. You can have your most recent one um, favorited. So we've got a favorites tab here. So for example, I've got library favorited um, let's say that because it's 2023, I want a favorite 2023 as well. And let's go one step further. Let's say that I'm working on my Norwegian Fjords photos. I can favorite Norwegian Fjords just by clicking on the little star. You can also right mouse click on the folder and remove from favorites, obviously, or if it's not there, add as a favorite. So if we flick now through to favorites, we can see that we've got Norwegian Fjords. So I can edit those if I want to. 2023, all my folders in 2023, and far back as library if I wanted to go through to all the different years. Um, so that's another way of just streamlining how you get to the folder that you and the photos that you want to work on. Um, quite useful 
I think, and if you don't want it in there anymore, let's just take this one out, remove from favorites, we come back to browse and we can now see that the star has gone next to Norwegian Fjords. Now in terms of editing, um, let's just show this in Finder. Do, 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 do. I'm sure we can do, you can right mouse click on it, show in Finder, and that's gonna bring up the, um, the Finder window for your images um, and where they're saved. So let me just go back to having this as a split screen. I'll probably jump the gun at closing that as a split screen. So tile to the left, tile to the right. So let's find one that isn't an iPhone photo. So this is this next one here. So you've got that photo here. Here is the original raw file. Here is the um, edited photo on the left. And you can see that it adds an XMP file. So that's where the edits are stored. So again, it doesn't touch the, a bit like Lightroom, it's non-destructive. It doesn't touch the original file itself. It's, oh, what have I done there? <laughs> How did that happen? So yeah, so here's that photo edited in here with the XMP file added in the hard drive, which contains all the data of the edit that is in Lightroom itself but the original file still remains so we are gonna let's just keep this as a split screen just in case we're just gonna change the dimensions of it um, so yeah so we've got all of these so all of these photos here you could, there's a couple of different views that you can have um, in the cloud down here at the bottom you have these three or four different views you have photo grid you have squid squid <laughs> square grid so photo grid is as you see there this is just square photos. Uh, sorry, yeah, this is the square grid. This is not the squid. This is the um, uh, like a tile gallery square grid, and this is a before or a comparison view, I believe. What does it say? Yeah, comparison view. So we've got the three there in to view, and then we have the fourth one, which is detail. Now detail allows you access to the editing. If we come into one of these other views and we try and click the edit options, it, it tells us that we have to go to detail view. So we can click there on detail view or we can click detail view at the bottom. So we have three in sort of a view mode and we have one in an edit mode. If we go over to the local, we have only three. We have the square grids, we have the compare and we have the detail view, which is where you edit. So we don't have this option here of a tiled um, sort of a, a tiled mosaic type gallery in the local tab it only gives us the normal square grid where they're all the same size so once you're in the local view what you can do is you can pick a favorite let's uh where should we go let's find one let's just go to norwegian fjords We've still got filter options up here. I'm just gonna look at the ones that have been edited. And let's find, let's just pick any photo. I don't know why I'm searching, it really doesn't matter. Let's pick this one. So what we can do with this one, if we want to add it to the cloud, we can just say, go to copy one photo to the cloud. That will put it into the cloud. If you see up here, I'm currently using 19.6 megabytes of my 100 gig storage. If I copy the one photo to the cloud, and we're gonna say okay, and then we're gonna head into cloud, go to recently added one minute ago, and there's the photo. But if we now go up here to my cloud storage, we can see that that has jumped up to 21.4, uh, sorry, 41.4 meg. So it's jumped up 22 meg just from that one photo because it is the full res version. Now that's an important thing to remember because in Lightroom Cloud, if you added things to the, to the in Lightroom Classic, sorry, if you added things to the cloud, that it wouldn't show the full res version. It would add a preview. Previews don't take up any of your cloud storage. Um, but it is a little bit more cumbersome to get things in the cloud via Lightroom Classic, but it's a workaround if you don't want to eat up your cloud storage. But don't forget, these are full res raw files that I've just added to the cloud. So what you could do is you could do all your edits, 
Satham was JPEG. I'm going to do another video about how I do my or how I'm going to get organized in 2024. So um, look out for that before when it comes out. Um, I can't remember what I was saying now. So basically, yeah, you can you could save out all of your low resolution JPEGs, you know, just for the web or just for viewing on a mobile device or something, um, and save the JPEGs to the cloud, which will take up a fraction of the of the um, of the of the storage, and you'll get thousands and thousands and thousands of, of images if you just do the low res JPEGs. But anyway. So what else have I noticed? I don't think there's a great, see it's lost our filters again, which is a real, real pain. That's one of the things that I don't like. Um, there are lots of other things that aren't in here and I may get around to doing a video on the exact differences if I get the time. But for example, I think I mentioned this before, we can't, excuse me, we can't color code folders. We can't even color code images, um, which I find useful. I don't, it's not, a deal breaker, but it's it's just a way that I've adapted my workflow and it may affect me really transitioning to the cloud if I wanted to. Um, in terms of edit, most of the edits, um, there's still a lot of options in, in edits. The layouts are different and what's under the drop down menu are different. Um, I'm sure you can still have, I think it's called single view mode or something single panel mode. So you can still have single panel mode, which I have ticked here. So view, uh, edit panel, single panel mode, which means that when you open, so I've got lens blur open at the moment, when I open optics, lens blur closes, when I open effects, optics close. It's basically having only, it's the same as solo mode in Lightroom Classic. Um, so that's still there, which is handy. Keywording I know is different. Um, where do I find keywording here? So if I wanted to add a, let's say I wanted to say peer, and then I go to the next photo and that's also of a peer, it doesn't allow me to copy keywords to another. I would have to highlight all of the images and then add them and it's applied to all now. So in all of those images, you can see the original one here. I have peer and now I go to the other ones that I did and I've got peer now, but I can't copy them. So if you do find that you want to make more keywords over more photos, you may have to highlight all the ones you want first, identify the ones you want with the same keyword, highlight them all and then type in the keywords or have them saved in a Word document or something and then copy them and paste. You can copy them in Word. I think you can paste, you should be able to paste, yeah, you should be able to paste into um, into it, but you can't copy, which is a bit of a pain. Uh, so I'm not gonna go on any longer because I've been rambling along for far too long already. They're just the sort of the simple highlights of the local tab um, or the local storage options that you've got now. I think it'll be really, really, really good for people that want to use the cloud, but not want to use it for all their photos. So like me at the moment, I only use the cloud for um, adding things to Adobe portfolio. And that could be fine for me because it's not gonna chew up a hell of a lot of data. It's just gonna be low res JPEGs that I'm gonna save out when I finished editing and want to share um, in Adobe Portfolio. For those that insist on having thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of images across all of their devices, it's not gonna work. Um, unless you wanna pay a massive chunk for storage. And I'm not sure it even works in Lightroom Classic because you'd have to add all of your photos to collections and sync the, the previews through to um, cloud as well. So, you know, like I say, if it's, if you're not bothered about seeing all of your photos on every single device, it's good. I mean, apparently people have been asking, I have not, because I've not used cloud, but people have been asking for this access to local storage for years. Um, so I've read on forums and stuff and stuff like that. You've got it now, so make the use of it, make most of it. Um, again, is it the end start of the end of Lightroom Classic? Time will tell. I've had a few comments of people thinking it is more comments of people thinking it isn't, it's a stupid thing to say, um, but also had people saying, um, if they do it, I'm gonna go elsewhere, if I can't use Classic, then I'm done with Adobe, things like that. So 
interesting. Let me know your comments down below if you could do the usual stuff, like, comment, share, subscribe, all that kind of thing. And until the next video, thank you for watching. Bye for now.